Today on Burke Makes Stuff, I'm going to show you how to build a giant wall-sized chalkboard for all your communication needs in your household. Best of all, it's simple to build, inexpensive, and looks gorgeous in your home. Let's do it now. I'm Andrew Burke and this is Burke Makes Stuff. Welcome to Not My Workshop. Welcome to the living room. This is where we're going to be doing the project today. Um, it is a project that my wife has asked for for quite some time and I thought it's about time to get it done so why don't I share it with you guys. If this is your first time with us, don't forget to click the subscribe button and smash that little bell icon. That'll connect you to me and anytime I upload something new to the internet, you will be made notified promptly. If this is not your first time, I'd love for you to do me a small favor right now. And honestly, it's kind of a favor for you too. As I'm growing this channel, I'm trying to make sure it's what you guys want it to be. And in order to do that, I'm collecting a little bit of information as we go along. If you could take one second right now and go down into the comments and type the number of episodes you've seen of mine, and it doesn't have to be exact, I think I've seen this many, that's awesome, and which one you liked the best. Thanks so much, I'll give you a second right now. All right, let's go do this, shall we? The first thing you need to think about is getting your workspace cleared out and the area you're going to paint clean and dry. Very often it's a good idea on projects like this to mark out exactly where you're gonna want your paint and your border to be so you can get a better visual representation of how it's going to look when it's done. If you're wondering about this, by the way, this is awesome. It's a depth gauge by Empire. I think it cost me like a buck fifty. I use this thing all the time. Absolutely love it. Unless you live in a brand new house, it's very rare to find walls that are exactly vertical and the corners are exactly 90 degrees to each other. So you're going to want to grab yourself a level and make sure that the lines you're drawing to mark out this space are exactly perpendicular and are exactly vertical. I've actually repainted the chalkboards in my classroom multiple times over the last 10 years while I've been a teacher. And I found in that time that there is no chalkboard paint better than Rust-Oleum chalkboard writable erasable finish in black. The first time I used this paint at this point I kind of freaked out. It looked to me like the first coat wasn't really sticking and covering really well on the wall. But don't worry, when you add those second and third coats you're going to get that perfect finish you're looking for. The next step is definitely the most annoying out of all of the steps of this project. And that's simply waiting the 25 to 30 minutes for this coat of paint to dry before you can reapply another coat. Now you might have noticed that what I actually painted on the wall in black in the chalkboard paint is vastly different than what I had marked out originally on the wall. Now this brings me to probably the best shop tip I can ever possibly give any one of you out there ever. And here it is. If you're doing a project for your wife, ask your wife what she wants. Huh? Huh? Right? If I'd painted that whole wall black the way I was originally intending, it would have been nothing like what my wife wanted and she wouldn't have been happy with it. And a happy wife is a happy life. Oh yeah. Now that we've waited for the 25 to 30 minutes, we can put that second coat of paint on and you can see exactly how much better the coverage is on this coat than it was on the first. If you end up painting slightly outside of the lines you drew to delineate where the paint should end and the border should start, don't worry. Just remember we're going to put a frame around it and it will look perfect in the end. We just finished putting on the second coat out of three on the paint, so we're going to give that another half an hour, go back and apply that third coat just to make sure it looks totally perfect. It probably could get away with only two, but that third coat is just going to make it look that much better. So now it's time to turn our attention to the frame that's going to go around that area we just painted. Now to build this frame, I chose to use these three eight-foot sections of Select Pine. This is the perfect time to take a look at both sides of your boards and decide which one you want facing the room and which side you want facing the wall. Once you have that done, it's time to mark those measurements up on those boards and cut out your 45 degree angles. Something I find really useful in a project like this is not using a tape measure to mark the measurements on the second board, but to use the first board that you've already cut so that you know it is absolutely exact. Then you just flip that piece around Mark the other end and you know that what you have is an exact match to that first piece. 
all the frame pieces have been cut out, we did what's called a dry fit. That's when you lay them all next to each other to make sure that all the angles are correct and they line up properly, and they do. Next thing we need to do is sand them down just a little bit to make sure there's no splinters that are gonna catch anybody and break all those sharp corners and all the edges of the wood. My plan after that was to take these outside and spray them with this. This is Rust-Oleum crystal clear enamel. This is just to give it a little bit of a protective coat, uh, but it started pouring outside. So now we're at what, 100% humidity because water is falling out of the sky? So that's not gonna happen today. But luckily for you, you're watching a video. So, beautiful day out now. 70 degrees and sunny outside. I've already sanded all the wood down. Let's take it outside and get that clear coat on. Once you get everything set up, and get ready to spray that finish on the wood. Don't forget to dust off your pieces of wood. Since you just sanded them, there's all sorts of super fine dust on them, and if you leave that out, it'll get stuck in the enamel, and when you sand in between each coat, it'll be a mess. You're gonna apply three coats of this spray finish, and in between each, you're going to use a high grit sandpaper just to knock down any grain that's come up and take off any particles that have gotten stuck in between. Now that all the framing pieces for the chalkboard are outside drying, it's time to turn our attention to the chalk tray, chalk tray, chalk tray, that's going to hold the chalk for the chalkboard. Um, I found this piece of awesome wood that already has a little groove, a little channel, um, for, I guess, chalk in this case, uh, that was in just with a bunch of my extra wood pieces that I keep from old projects and stuff. Uh, the only issue with it is it has two holes on either end. But we're going to fill those with dowels and some wood glue, and then I'll saw them off with a flush cut saw, and we're good to go. Um, so there we go, let's get that done. The ends of this chalk tray are wide open, and since I don't want chalk falling all over the place, I grabbed two pieces of scrap wood, measured them out, and cut them out on the band saw to cover those up. Once the glue holding the end caps on had fully dried, I took it over to a tool I actually have never used before, though it's been in my shop for a little while. This is a Delta 1-inch belt sander that I got from a guy locally who used to build custom doll houses for customers professionally. I'm a little surprised at how well this thing worked at reshaping the wood and getting everything down to the way I wanted it. It was wonderful. The next thing to do was find center on the bottom of the chalk tray and glue this stabilizer piece on just to offer a little more stability when we attach it to the wall. Okay, everything is ready to go. All the pieces of the frame have been built and sanded and sealed. Uh, the chalk tray has been made. It's ready to go on the wall, but that's what we need to talk about right now. How are we gonna put these things on the wall? My wife and myself have decided that we do not want any of the nail heads to show, any of the screw heads to show, and because of that, I have decided to use liquid nails. I love this stuff, but you really need to be careful when choosing which one of them to use. Liquid Nails has, I think, something like 12 different types, and this one is specific for indoor projects, which is just what we want. But there are some, as you go up the ladder of strength, that say things on them like, this bond will outlast the structure. Um, that means that like, when they break down the building someday, that bond will still be there, and they are not kidding. So if you used that, on something like this and you put your wood up and then in four or five years you decide you want to take it down you're literally gonna to have to rip chunks of wall out with it and then replace all of that so going nice and easy with project based liquid nails so in order to use liquid nails or anything like that like caulk or anything that comes in a tube like this you need one of these this is called a caulk gun and what you do is you take the tube and you put it in you lock it down and as you pull this trigger this handle trigger it pushes this bar up which squeezes the stuff out. Now, a lot of people go running around looking for a pocket knife at this point or a utility knife to cut this thing open, but this is the HDX caulk gun, which has a little thing built directly into it to cut your tip off. That sounds weird. Cut the tip off of your caulk gun. So, uh, you just put it in at that point and we're ready to go. Let's get this thing up. I forgot to show you something. Once you've gotten the end cut off, you have this little stick thing Literally, I don't know what else to call it. It's a little metal stick that you poke down in to break the seal and allow the caulk, or in this case, the liquid nails, to come out. Ta-da. So then when you load it in, we're ready to use it. Let's go. It is very important when putting up this first piece to take your time and to use a level to make sure it is perfectly level with the room and with the ceiling. 
because everything is going to be placed off of this first piece, this is the one that really matters. Then you just continue with the other three pieces, applying liquid nails, putting it back on the wall where you think it goes, and then using the level to make sure it's perfect. So I did end up having to use two nails for each one of the boards, little tiny nails, uh, just to hold it in place while the liquid nails itself dries. But the thing I didn't think about was how to affix the chalk tray to the bottom of the whole thing. So I have it all built, it's ready to go. My idea is to pre-drill holes, four holes <clears throat> on the bottom of this, and then go underneath the piece and drill it into the structure of the frame itself. I think that should work and you're not gonna be able to see the screws because it's from underneath. Uh, I guess we'll see how that works. I wanna share something really special with you now. As I was finishing the project up, my wife happened to come down the stairs while my microphone was still on. I wanted to share with you guys just a little bit of that audio clip because it makes me smile. It came out pretty good so far, I think. I love it, I absolutely love it. Good. So cool. Good, that's what matters. Give me a kiss, I love you. She's happy, I'm happy, the project came out great. This is a easy project that you can do just like the other ones on my channel, Burke Makes Stuff. Go check it out right now, watch another video, leave a comment if you like this. If you're still watching this all the way at the end like we are now, leave a comment below that says, I'm still here. I would love to see who's actually all the way with us. That would be clutch. Guys, I'll see you guys next time, Wednesday, four o'clock. If you need something to watch, check out one of these, and if you haven't subscribed yet, which would be crazy, hit that button right there. Later.